Hi, welcome to Concordia Theological Seminary and to our lectionary podcasts. We are now um, coming to the end of Easter, Easter uh, 7. Of course, every Sunday is an Easter, but this is the season, the end of it. And um, uh, we'd like to take a little look uh, today at the book of, of Acts and to see how the church continued on. And we see the uh, apostolic number filling once again to, to 12, signaling that the church is indeed the new Israel, God's chosen and holy people. So it happened that uh, in verse 12, they went into Jerusalem. And this is significant because in the, in the Gospel of Matthew, for instance, you're up there on the, on the mount and um, Jesus says, go to all the nations. And if you only had the Gospel of Matthew, you might think they just simply went to the nations. Um, but first they went, Luke has us know that they went into Jerusalem uh, and uh, they went... Um, from the Mount uh, called Olives, the Mount of Olives, which is near Jerusalem. And this is a great Lucan way to say it. It's about a, the road, a uh, Sabbath day's uh, a journey. So it's, it's not t- too far away. Um, but Luke has a lovely way of phrasing it. And uh, verse 13, and when they went in, they went into the, to the upper room. And uh, where they were, where they were dwelling, um, maybe this was the upper room in which they celebrated the supper. And now we have a listing of the apostles. So it's uh, you can see here in the in the book of Acts, we have the all of them listed. It is noteworthy to see that the first two are Peter and John, and then James. In the Synoptic Gospels, or at least in Matthew and Mark. We usually think about the uh, triad of Peter, James, and John. But in the book of Acts, uh, Peter and John are placed together. In fact, uh, for the first five or six chapters, the only apostle who ever speaks, uh, who has a speaking role, is Peter. And John is always at his side. And I think Luke does this um, because he wants to show the unity of the church, that Peter and John do belong together. And um, now we, we're used to seeing this list, uh, for instance, in Matthew chapter 10, but the group is all back together now to begin the church. So Peter and John and James, and then Andrew, Peter's brother, I guess he gets in fourth place, and Philip and Thomas and Bartholomew and um, Matthew and um, the, Simon the, the, the zealot, and uh, you have... Uh, <laughs> I guess unfortunately named, but uh, Jude, the son of the son of James, and all of these were. Now this is uh, devoting themselves, and they were homo thumado, and they were of one accord or of one heart. This is very typical in the uh, in the book of Acts. Uh, when you think about this word, um, I think in our own system. Uh, we use the word Concordia. So we have Concordia Theological Seminary in Fort Wayne, Concordia Seminary, and all of the Concordias. And what that expresses is that we all are of one heart, we're of one mind, we are of one confession uh, together. And it's really quite a beautiful picture of church unity. And they were devoting themselves to the prayer. To so um, this, Jesus was a man of prayer in uh, the Gospel of, of Luke, and his disciples learned from him. Now also, the Gospel of Luke is, has an emphasis um, in chapter 8 that Jesus was accompanied by various women who took care of the, the needs of the disciples. They helped to run the show. Well, also, at the beginning of the church, uh, men and women were both active and part of that church. So along with the apostles devoted to prayer, they were with the women. So um, you think about all the Marys at the cross. And then there's another Mary, of course, then Mary, uh, the mother of Jesus. So um, yeah, she is prominent in the early church as she was during the life of Christ. And then uh, this little extra bit that uh, not only 
uh, do you have the mother there, but also Jesus, his brother. So it does appear that Jesus had brothers, um, James and Jude, and uh, we know there are four and along with sisters. Uh, but the family is there. And um, I, in some ways, Luke is also, I think he, Luke shows the canon of the New Testament and how it holds together. In some ways, he's anticipating, I believe, here, or, or letting us know that the brothers were, in fact, followers of Christ. And uh, you know, when we think about James and Jude, the brothers of Jesus, it seems that they both, um, in a way, became apostles, witnesses to Christ, and they are the authors of those uh, James' quite significant epistle and the smaller but quite interesting letter by Jude as well. So the family is there, and this constitutes... And this is the way it is in a lot of our churches as well, isn't it? That um, when we think about the church, we think about how much of the church is built upon families. So if I go to church and my wife goes and children, and um, perhaps we're descendant of another, our grandparents who went to church, uh, the first, witness, the first uh, ones to whom we witness, of course, are our, our own children. So it's quite natural that there would have been a lot of family members in that early church. Now, um, in those days, Anastas, Peter, uh, it's a very strong word. Peter rose up. Peter was the leader of the apostles. He's the spokesman for the apostles. So whatever you say about you know, the fumbling and bumbling of Peter during the Gospels, he becomes a strong leader. And this is what Jesus said. He says, um, Satan asked to sift you like wheat, but I've been praying for you. And he says, um, when you turn, uh, go strengthen your brothers. So Jesus anticipated that Peter would, in fact, um, repent and of, his, of his denials and that he would come back and he would be strong in the faith. So Peter was in the midst of the brothers, and I think here it means the brothers in the ministry especially, and now, uh, it's interesting, there's a crowd of names, and I think the number is significant, um, it's 120. The question we would have to ask, or at least I'm curious, are these 120, is that like the congregation? It could very well be. Or it could be 120 men who will um, constitute the ministerium of the early church. We do know in the Gospel of Luke that they were, Jesus sent out 12, and then he sent out 70, uh, which is to say, all along, Jesus was calling men to the ministry. So the apostles, you might think of as the first class, they were there witnessed as witnesses from the baptism uh, of, of our Lord, but then others were called along the way as well. So the 120, now the 120 I think matters too because it's that number 12 that Luke really likes. Um, we think of the book of Revelation, I suppose, uh, the 12 uh, by the... By 12, you have 144,000 of the elect. But the 12 constitutes, uh, is a picture for Luke or by Luke that this is, in fact, the new, the new Israel. Now, um, as we go further, uh, we see that Jesus, uh, or that Peter, excuse me, he addresses his brothers, and he says, men, brethren, um, it was necessary. Now, this is also a great word in the Gospel of Luke. Everything that Jesus did, uh, his suffering, his dying, and rising, were necessary uh, as a fulfillment of the Scriptures, of the Law and the Prophets. Well, so also in the book of Acts. I mean, this is a Lucan contribution to our thinking about things. Not simply is the life of Jesus necessary because it's the fulfillment of the Old Testament, but also the life of the church was anticipated. And this opens up uh, ways of thinking about things. So when we think about um, any kind of water imagery, like the flood or the exodus, all of that was anticipating not simply the coming of Christ, which it is, but it anticipates the life of the church, which is Christ's body. And it would be very instructive to note that in the book of Acts, the apostles are uh, quoting again and again the Old Testament to say to their fellow um, Israelites, to say to their brothers in the flesh that, yes, the Messiah has come, and he, he is the fulfillment of the Old Testament, our scriptures. But also what we're doing now is, it's not something, it was something that was anticipated. 
And when we give, we've got to give Peter a lot of credit here because he's going to Jerusalem in which there are still the priests, the high priests, the scribes, all the leaders. And yet Peter is asserting his apostolic authority, saying what we're doing now is the next phase in God's great plan of salvation to bring uh, the gospel to all nations. So it was necessary for these things to happen, um, which the Holy Spirit talked about. Now, see, this is amazing because... Um, in one sense, we say the Holy Spirit is coming in the book of Acts um, or in the Pentecost, uh, which we will soon celebrate. But, but the Holy Spirit was active even in the Old Testament um, because the Holy Spirit spoke through the mouth of David. So um, the Holy Spirit was active. The scriptures are, in fact, God are God breathed and um, Luke wants to show the unity of the Old Testament and the New Testament together and of the church and of Israel concerning, this is what he spoke about concerning Judas who became a, a, a guide, um, the, the worst kind of a guide um, to those who, he became a guide to those who took hold of and arrested Jesus. Now I suppose in one sense, um, the calling of Judas might be an embarrassment to the early church. Uh, the pagans uh, said so. But these things had to happen, uh, that God used this man who, who did an evil deed. But he used even that evil deed to bring about the plan of salvation. Now, who was this Judas in verse 17? I think this, this, this is a, a kind of a Lucan way of talking about it. Um, you can see the word in here, arithmetic. He was numbered among us, and he had a lot or a share in our diaconias. Now, this also tells us something about ministry that um, we might think, and we're, in the book of Acts, we're going to be um, introduced to the idea of a diaconate. Uh, yet, uh, the apostles themselves also were involved in diaconal ministry. This is a ministry of service. So um, he had a share in our lot, and he was numbered among us. And verse 18, um, And this man acquired a field with the reward of his wickedness. He fell headlong. He burst open in the middle, and, his, <laughs> and all of his guts, his bowels, they were poured out. Um, so we have the, the plural um, neuter, which takes the uh, singular singular verb. So he's, he's, t he's telling the story. This was, he, he bought this field. This field was bought um, with, from the, the evil deed, the, the, the wages of the evil deed, adikaios. Um, and this tells the story of his, the, the bitter end and suicide of Judas. Now this is known, I guess, by, by everyone. Um, it was known to, to all those who dwell in Jerusalem, and it was called in the dialect Akel Damak, which is again the the field of the field of blood. And uh, now verse 20, we have a quote from the Psalms. So it is, now it's, in, it's interesting, it, it is written in the Biblio Psalms, like the little book of Psalms. That same word is used by, well, Matthew begins his book by saying this is the Biblos uh, of, of Jesus Christ. This is the book. Um, in the Gospel of John, he uses this a diminutive form with the iota subscript. So in this little book of Psalms, this also reminds us of the end of the Gospel of Luke, Luke chapter 24, in which uh, Luke said that, um, where Luke says that Jesus opened up to them, uh, the disciples on the road to Emmaus, he opened up the law and the prophets, but so also did he open up the book of the book of the Psalms. And the Psalms are a great resource for the church today. And they're not simply songs about God in a generic way, but they really sing to us Christ. And now, even um, the Psalms also uh, 
foretell in a marvelous way the story, the story of the church. Uh, here it foretells the story, a sad story, of, of Judas himself. And, and therefore let his camp become Hermaeus, so let it become a desolate, and no one will dwell in it. And then again, uh, now this is, this is great if you think about the office of, of the ministry, uh, because it says then, let no one, uh, therefore let another, labeto, so this is our third person, I guess it's called an imperative, I think about it in Latin as a justive, let someone else, heteros, let somebody else take his episcopane. Now this also does show that, now we, we might think of the trifold office as being deacons and pastors and bishops and Certainly there is a truth to that within the church history. On the other hand, there, the apostles, um, they, they, they exercised various aspects of this one ministry. So they were, theirs was a ministry of diaconos, as we've seen, that is of service. But theirs was also a, uh, theirs, theirs was also a, a ministry of oversight, so to, to look over epi, Episcope, to look over, that's what it means to be a bishop. It means to watch over the whole, the whole scene. And uh, Peter understands the necessity, though, of, of carrying on this mission. So it is necessary uh, that there be among the men that the Lord would choose another. Uh, so one of the men who was soon... Alphontos, those who are coming along with us, one of those men, in all the time from when Jesus came in and went out from us. Now, um, here it's the when Jesus came in. I, I suppose it's speaking about the the incarnation uh, who, and the going out. Of course, we think about the ascension, but now in verse twenty-two. He's going to be a little bit more specific as to the time period that we're looking for. They want somebody from the men who have been with them. So th this is interesting, too, because when we think about the Gospels, we, at least in my mind, we think of the 12, and that's true. But really, there was a larger entourage, and there were more students in this seminary. So I remember going to India, and uh, I was teaching a class there. And those who had been there at the seminary the longest, they were in the front row. And at the back were the, the new seminarians. And uh, some of them, the, the, the people who were in the front row, had been there for any number of years as they were awaiting ordination. And in some sense, I think when we think of the Gospel of Luke, it's the same thing. You have an inner core, Peter, John, and James, but then you have the 12, and that's really the foundation. But after that, there, there are other circles there, people who have been called and, and uh, were with Christ during his ministry. Now they want to add a 12th, and they want to get somebody who has been with them, our Kamanus, the beginning from the baptism of, of, of John. So this is why the Gospel of Mark um, begins with the baptism of, of, of John, or the baptism of Jesus by John because that signals the beginning of Jesus' ministry up until the day in which he was taken up from us. So he would be a martyr and a witness, one who was willing to testify that he had seen Christ with his own eyes of his resurrection. And of course, if you would not have been a witness of Christ's life, yeah, it would be more difficult, I suppose, to be a witness of his resurrection because how would you know it's the same guy? Well, these men, there were men who were with him and the great crowds who were with him who heard him preach and were with him walking along the road. Uh, this same man, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ, God's own son, they witnessed his resurrection among them, and this is the kind of person uh, that they were looking to be uh, with them uh, as to, to fill the uh, apost one of these, 
to fill the apostolic number. So there stood there, they stood before them too, a great man, Joseph, the one called Barsabbas. Um, well, I don't know what happened to him, but I imagine that he became a, a great preacher as well. But there is another one also who, um, oh, who is called Justice, and so that's, uh, and Matthias. Now Matthias, will know, is the one that's going to be added to the number. And uh, what, what I like about this, well, it, it, I do like the fact that they give honor to the first, um, Joseph, who's called uh, Barsabbas, who's also called Justice. So he deserves the, the honor we remember. I think about, for instance, in many churches, you have the pictures of the pastors along the wall, those who have been faithfully serving a congregation. I think that's a wonderful, that's a wonderful tribute to the men uh, who baptized our, our children, who perhaps performed our wedding vows, that sort of thing. So he receives a kind of an honor and thanksgiving, but then there is Matthias who will be added to the, to the number. And uh, verse 24, and they were, while they were praying again, you see that emphasis. Uh, Jesus was a man of prayer in the Gospel of Luke especially. And evidently the disciples and the apostles picked up on this. And he says, you Lord, so um, they, you Lord, you know, uh, this is a great uh, cardio, uh, nosta, so you are knower of all hearts, show us on a deck song the one whom, now this is a, you might think it's first person, but it's one of those second person, um, show, uh, show us which one of these two that you have selected. So, it, of course, it is always the Lord who calls. He uses the church in the call process, but it is always God who is active. So we just had our Whenever we have a uh, service, we're reminded of that at the seminary, that as young men go into the ministry, that, um, see if I can find this again. Um, oh, here we go. This went a little bit too f far here. This is fun, huh? No? Okay, we're almost there. And he will take, now this is so interesting, so you're going to take, what, what is he going to do? Take the place of this, again, diaconias. Now in one sense, again, we think that the office of the deacon is going to come up in chapter 7 of the book of Acts, um, which is true. And yet, in a sense, the apostles already have the office of the deacon within their um, apostolic office. This is uh, the place of, of this ministry, diaconias, and of, and of apostleship. So um, now that's special because there are only 12, or there are 12, at least we should say there are 12 foundational apostles. Now, I have heard some people say, for instance, that um, in the book of Acts, Peter makes a mistake here because 12, um, well, Paul eventually would be chosen to be an apostle. But Paul's an apostle, but he's not one of the 12. The 12 are a little bit different in as much as they are foundational. In order for the gospel to begin in Jerusalem, Judea, and then go to the Samaria, and then go to the ends of the earth, well then, um, you, you've got to begin with 12 as the number of the new Israel. And so, he, again, it's got to take this place because Judas uh, went away. Well, he went on to his own, went to his own place, which is very sad. So what do they do? They give lots, uh, kleros. They, we would say they cast lots, and uh, the lot fell. So they just, you know, it's a roll of the dice. It's a <laughs> casting of the lots. The lot fell on, on Matthias. I, I kind of wonder whether we should do that sometimes, maybe when we have our call process at, at our congregations, uh, maybe choose two and just uh, roll the dice. Maybe that's not the best, but it takes a lot of the acrimony out of it or the kind of partisanship that might come. And a lot fell on Matthias. 
and um, he was then uh, counted uh, among the, he was counted along with, he was numbered then with the 11. So when you think about the um, 11 apostles, you think about the Gospel of Matthew, it ends on the Mount uh, in Galilee, on the mountain, and it says there are 11 apostles. Luke says we can't uh, begin the church with 11, we have to have 12. And the truth, the greater truth, I think it's so important for us is, especially in an event, a world in which, uh, you know, American Christianity is so dominated in some ways by the evangelicals, and they're always talking about Israel. And Israel is still, the nation of Israel today is still somehow this holy nation that it's God's chosen people set apart. And not from the book of Acts, though. The book of Acts is clear that it's the church that is the, continu is the co continuation of Israel. The church is God's holy people. That's what it says in Luke, and that's what it says in, in Acts. And um, it matters because everyone needs Christ. Christ is the, is the head of us all. And it doesn't matter whether you're a Jew or a Gentile. Um, we, need, we need Christ, and the covenant is filled, fulfilled in him. So thank you for spending a little time. It's a longer text, but it, it is a fascinating and a beautiful one. So thank you for being with us, and we look forward to doing this again.